Hey folks, this is Eric here from Tournamix. I hope everyone is doing well this holiday season. Today we're looking at hands-off drum mixing. Now what does that mean? Why would I make a tutorial about what I didn't do? Well, the truth is, as I know it at least, is in mixing, uh, it's often what we don't do that matters most. You know, um, we're very compelled to do things. I mean, we've studied EQ, compression, saturation, reverb, and it's very counterintuitive to then not do it, <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, imagine you trained for the Olympics for four years and then you didn't run as hard as you could possibly run in a race. It would make no sense. But in mixing, it often does make sense. And the path of least resistance is often the best path. So I'm going to show you my drum mixing today for this song. Uh, this is Summer Song. All right. And uh, let me just play you the first little bit of the two and then we'll get down to what I did. Just before Memorial Day. All right, and let's move along to the chorus just so you can hear like more of the full kit. Getting away when the work day is out. Sure sounds good and the beat is strong Puts me in the mood, why don't you come along? Right, so there we have it. That was my final mix of this song. And um, as you can hear, the drums are fairly background. And that's how I thought they, you know, they should be. I didn't really hear this as a big slam and drum sound. It's kind of like a Steely Dan, you know, old school kind of song to my ear with a bit of country mixed in. And I just thought it needed a nice chill drum sound. So I did very, very little to the tracks. Let's take a look. All right, so here's the raw drums. And I'm just going to show you the power of phase correction to begin with. Here's the completely raw drums. And on the top shelf here, I'm going to turn back on these gain plugins. All right, so if, if you see these plugins, it means the polarity was inverted. Here we go. Here's the raw kit. All right, so probably nothing new there for you, but you got to check phase, okay? The, uh, on the overheads here, they actually weren't inverted in polarity. I just used them to balance out the signal because if you look in close here at the, uh, at the track, uh, which one is it here? It's the overhead here. You can see, um, you know, that, that there's an imbalance in the way that it was recorded, that, you know, the input signal was hotter on one side. So I used this gain plugin to tilt it back into, into shape. All right, so that's phase, um, which made a big, big difference. Next up, um, let me just play you the kit completely mixed here. So here's with all the uh, plugins back on and the reverbs. Oops, missed this one. Right, and then back to raw sounds like this. So you can hear it, it is actually a pretty different sound. I mean, it, it came a long way there, but my processing is actually very minimal. Let's check it out. All right, so first up's the overheads, and all I did on these overheads is add Omega A to them. This is a saturation plugin from Kush that I love, and you'll hear here, it's pretty subtle. Here's the raw track. And. Really subtle stuff. It just gives a little bit of brightness, which I love, and it controls the signal a little, a little bit dynamically, but really not much happening there. Okay, here's the hi-hat, and typically I don't do much to hi-hat, especially in a kind of a natural song like this. All I did is roll off the low end. That's it. All right, so we're moving pretty quick here. Um, let's go over to the kick for a second. All right, let me show you what I did here. All right, so three plugins. Here's the raw kick. And here's mixed. Again, raw. And again, you can hear it's very subtle. I mean, it's hardly doing anything. I just cleaned it up a little bit with EQ. I added some saturation and compression to kind of, you know, control the signal a bit. But I, I really didn't do much. It, it sounds almost the same processed compared to raw. Let's take a look at the snare. So for the snare, it was just two uh, plugins, some saturation here. This is again the Omega A and some compression and no EQ, okay? Like, let's hear it raw. And 
on. You know, again, a little brighter and, uh, you know, a little more energy with the compression, but, uh, you know, no EQ, nothing fancy, very, very subtle stuff. All right, for the toms, all I did, I'm just going to show you one of the tom tracks because it was the same thing. All I did is gate it with the Augsburg drum gate, and I, I didn't actually uh, gate them hard. I just pulled down the gain by 12 dB, okay? So I re reduced the bleed by 12 dB, and then I added a very, very simple EQ, just accentuating the fundamental of the tom a bit here and rolling off some lows, and that's it. That's what I did for all the toms. And then I routed the three toms, okay, whoops, these three here, to my tom sub, and on the tom sub, I added... Again, Omega A. So I use a lot of saturation on this drum kit instead of compression. So Omega A is going to sort of control the peaks and brighten it a bit. And then I added some revival for some top end. All right. And that's all I did in the toms. Now I think we've gone. So I'm going to turn these guys back on too. Okay. All right. And um, that is it. Other than, well, the stick hits here, um, th these were actually part of the snare track, but I split them off and created a separate track. And on the, the stick hits, all I did was compress. That's it, literally. Let's take a look at the drum bus now. So let's hear the full kit, and I'm going to keep these off for a second. So here, here's the kit right now. All right, so I think we're already in, in a pretty good place. Let's take a look at the drum bus here. And uh, so I used two plugins. It was the, uh, the, the tape plugin here from IK Multimedia, uh, as well as the famous Mag EQ. All right, so I've got tape on uh, 456, 15 IPS, and we've got a 5K high shelf here, just a couple notches. All right, so let me just turn that off here. I'll turn this off here. Sorry, turn it off now. And um, let's listen to the kit raw, and uh, let me then bring these in. That's mixed. That's off. Yeah, I really like that. I mean, it, it's not like, uh, it doesn't really change the, the sound or the, the vibe of the drum kit, but it just gives it that extra sparkle and clarity. All right, and you'll notice I didn't even do drum bus compression. I have no parallel compression, which I'm not exaggerating. That might be the first time in four years that I haven't <laughs> mixed with parallel compression on drums. You know, it's possible that that would have worked, you know, maybe some subtle compression in parallel, but I didn't even feel like I needed it in context. All right, so we have gone through the entire drum kit. Um, I have only used two compressors on the entire kit. I didn't compress the overheads, hi-hats, didn't compress the toms, just compressed the snare and kick. The stick hits, you know, also, but again, it was kind of part of the same track as the snare, so I'm not going to count that one. Two compressors. That's the, the smallest amount of compressors I've ever used on a drum kit. All right, now let's turn on the reverbs and hear that, because this actually changes the sound quite a bit. Here's with the reverb. Um, so if I mute the reverb, here's the kit again. And on. All right, so what's interesting about this is listen to the snare, how without the reverb, I'm going to turn it off again here. Without the reverb, the snare is, you know, it's there, but it's it's not really too uh, punchy. And it gets a lot punchier with the reverb. Here it is off. Kind of tame. And on. Like, that's insane, right? Now, it sounds a little verby in solo here, but in the context of the song, you don't even really hear it uh, as being, like, nearly that reverberant. So that's kind of interesting, though, how much that changed the snare. And um, to be honest, I, the, I added the reverb very, very early on in my drum mix. And it actually, uh, you know, it, like, before I added all these plugins, I just was like, you know what? I'm going to put this in, in a sense of space. And it, 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 it actually allowed me to add a lot less plugins. All right, so there is the full drum mix. Um, very, very uh, minimal and... Um, you know, very, very simple. And, um, you know, this isn't to say that you always have to do this. Obviously, um, you know, every song has its its own need. Like if this was metal, we'd have to do a whole bunch more to it to make it pop. But uh, don't be afraid to do, um, to do hardly anything, really. You don't always have to EQ. You don't always have to compress. Sometimes, you know, it's best just to leave things alone. So if you listen to the full song again real quick, let's just hear kind of the same section. Uh... 
You know, to each their own, but I think that sounds really good. And most of that is just thanks to the great playing and great recording. But I like to think I helped a bit. So there we have it. That's the lesson for today. We'll talk soon.